<clears throat> hey guys, good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Miss JD once again for a brand new episode of our daily stock market insights. Time now is 3.45 in the morning of March 4th, 2021. So this is a pre-open stock market analysis. Okay, so uh, like a regular cadence, I want to make sure that I share with you my thoughts on how your favorite stocks have been or had performed the previous day. So we are prepared for the market later today. And uh, if this is the type of video you want to watch every single day, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're always updated whenever I have new videos. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> so at a glance, what I can see here in the index is one a very noticeable volume that happened right over here. Okay, so let us see. There's a an increase in the price because there's a big spike in the volume and we're starting to um, make an attempt to break the uh, <clears throat> MA20 line. And I think this has already broken the downtrend channel over here. As you can see, it should be right over here. So I was plotting this last night, right? And I think we were just halfway. We were already halfway somewhere here, there. So I think that this, these two are already a confirmation that we have broken out of the trend line, uh, the downtrend channel that is. So I'm, I'm positive that we will be facing uh, some continuation to the upside, uh, although just face um, expect that it's not going to be a linear, uh, a linear uh, direction or movement. There will be fluctuations along the way. So we might, we now have. Uh, for me, I'm looking at the uh, 6,912 level as a brand new support because we've already broken out of that resistance, and uh, yeah. Uh, the result of this is that most likely our blue chip companies are now showing signs of recovery after a few weeks of uh, downtrend, right? So let's take a look at <clears throat> let's take a look at your uh, trending stocks. Okay, I've already sorted our our stocks here, all stocks and the ones that are highly traded. All right, let's start with AR. AR is not one of the stocks in the index, but it was the highly traded stock for the day. As you can see right over here, well, there was a gap up. Uh, I think this is a classic pump and dump uh, situation that happened today. So just be extra careful. And I think we're very near um, the, the support of this stock. So this was the um, previous resistance that became a support. And then uh, yesterday, March 2nd, that is, uh, we had a, a ga uh, ceiling play. And then there was a continuation slightly. We ha started it uh, higher than the last price as of yesterday. And then we, we pushed the price higher, but only to have profit taking before the day ended. So... That's not a good picture. I, I was, I think, mentioning something like this uh, in my analysis yesterday. So <clears throat> my take here is just wait for the price to touch the the 0 0.0037. So get in as near as you can to that area. And I'm not expecting for an immediate recovery. We could be doing sideways first and then we push the price higher. But at this point, anywhere between 0 0.0037 to 0 0.0046, that is the acceptable uh, price level of AR. PHA. PHA, um, we have already reached a um, uh, resistance. So today, on the first hour of the day, they were experienced or the stock was halted and then all of a sudden, when it was activated, price shoot up from here and then push the price higher. So there was an attempt, but people took profit right away, understandably, because 
uh, we are already at a resistance area. This has already made uh, multiple uh, attempt to break that that resistance level. But each time we hit that level, yeah, look at how your RSI is behaving. The momentum is starting to die down. So I will not be surprised at any moment from now we could be breaking the MA20 line and it will uh, revisit previous key levels. And for now, what I can say here is that if it is going to break and retrace, uh, chances are it could even go back to the 1.87 level. Okay, and uh, don't rush, guys. I see, or let's say if you're a long-term investor for PHA, maybe if you already have uh, a, a position here, that's fine. You can do two things. You can just stay there, and then when it dips, then you can add more volume. Otherwise, if you are already profitable, take some profit. Let half of it stay just in case this key level is not going to be revisited. At least you still you still have exposure to the stock and it could um, go with the flow wherever it is going to go uh, in case there's a breakout that will happen. At the same time, the buying power that you have because you sold partially, then you can buy more when it reaches 1.87 area in the event it dips some more. Okay, But overall, PHA really has a lot of... Uh, promising projects. I know I've been reading Investigram's uh, social media feed and uh, I see a lot of good good materials that uh, people have already shared here and uh, there are projects uh, that we have in the pipeline for PHA. Digital bank, banking, uh, what else? Crypto, Squid Pay, there are several. <clears throat> okay, so those are my my key points for PHA. Dito here, I'd say, so I mentioned that I think our um, bounce level, I know I mentioned it somewhere here, our bounce level is around the 1470, uh, 1469 area. I mentioned that if you can just check the video that I created uh, the previous days and even yesterday. <clears throat> um, we have reached a, a good level at, the, at this point. It has already been touching that for several days now. In fact, this day over here, that was our first trigger. And then it was validated by these days that there's an attempt to go down to up to that level. And then each time we hit that level or we go near that level, there's a bounce that's happening. So I'm thinking uh, this is already uh, the dip or the correction that people have been anticipating when the price was at this area at the overbought level so we were already thinking that it could retrace any moment from now and it did and uh, i'm thinking this is already it this is the area and uh, another thing the commercial launch will happen on the 8th so chances are there's really a big possibility that it will shoot up in price because people are starting to uh, discover dito as a third telco and at the same time, they, you know, they will have this mindset to, you know, start investing and we'll see more investors. Uh, there will be traders. Traders will never go away. But the ratio of uh, traders and investors, we will see a possible increase in the ratio. We will have more investors in Dito considering the potential. We've learned from Globe. We've learned from PLDT. And uh, seeing the price of uh, Dito right now and the price of PLDT and Globe, even if you will just hit one-fourth of that price, we are going to be very profitable if people are investing as early as now. So I'm sure many of our, our you know, fellow, fellow Filipinos, they're already considering this. And that's the reason why we are here. Uh, I'm not a guru, okay? I'm just a, a, an enthusiast of the stock market who shares uh, these insights uh, in YouTube. And I'm sure one way or the other, hopefully, we are able to influence and educate our um, kababayans, right? Start investing in the stock market. And Dito, for several, uh, since 2018, this has started uh, really gaining popularity for our investors.
BSC. BSC, I think this is a bounce for BSC. Okay, uh, we've managed to uh, cross uh, the MA20 line, started triggering that is. So I plot our support at this key area over here, 1.10. Uh, and uh, we ended with a green today, 7.7 .7 million foreign buying. I was actually interested in getting in this stock today, although I, I added a few more in my portfolio, so I don't want to maintain so many stocks. That I will not be able to closely monitor. Uh, but for now, I think uh, BSC is already a bounce. And uh, try to get in if there will be fluctuations by tomorrow and in the coming days. Try to get in as near as you can to the 1.10 level. Right now, this volume, there's a slight increase in the volume. See that previously, we are just below that cloud and slowly we are showing that increase in the volume with foreign buying. So this is starting to trigger a, um, a, a good momentum. APL, APL. Nice. <clears throat> I see this. It doesn't really hit my 0.24 target. Um, but then still, I'm very happy. So either way, if it goes down to the 0.24 area or it goes higher, both ways, I'm still very happy because I still have exposure in APL. And right now, this is already a bounce. I strongly feel that we will have a continuation in the coming days for APL. So the next resistance we will be facing will be around the 0.29 uh, key level at this point, or yeah, 0.29. But I'm sure we could easily break that, especially because one, the index is already showing some signs of recovery. So we've already experienced the uh, heavy sell-off in the past few days, and this is already this could be it. This could be the start of the recovery overall for majority of our stocks. So if you were green in the past few days in your overall portfolio then good job because uh february the month of february wasn't really easy for everybody but if you were able to maintain a green port then that means you are doing the right thing you must have done the right thing you bought what people were scared and fearful of the situation that's why when the stock started to recover then uh you're starting to uh, reap the fruits of your labor. Okay, now for ABBA. ABBA had a um, gap up today, pushed the price higher, but it filled that gap on the same day, which I appreciate because it's not, uh, imagine this. <clears throat> this one, push the price higher, there's a gap up that happened stayed there but it has to drop and fill that gap i don't know if, if it has fully filled the gap but i think yeah somehow but see that it takes several days to fill a gap but here good thing it happened on the same day at least you, you don't have to wait that long uh for now i'd say we have um, touched a possible support area at the moment or I see it at 1.19, just where your MA20 line is for ABBA. So I feel that uh, there could be a big chance that uh, we will recover uh, right around this level. This is the trend line in the short term. That we are following this trend line over here. So if you don't break that, then good. It's just an, a, a reaction to the gap up that we have to fill that gap. And then uh, eventually, by tomorrow, hopefully, We'll see that uh, positive reaction to this dip. The next one is uh, let's take a look at BDO. BDO is a red, but we are now at the MA20 line, so I feel that we could just uh, stabilize in this key level at the moment. Over here, 106. There's foreign selling that happened for for video <clears throat> there's point 30 so I just realized that before I had video and I was very profitable because my average here was 93 and then I was able to take profit around this key level um, but I just realized 
M MBT offers a very good uh, dividend compared to BDO. So I now have MBT and uh, I was able to avail the dividend. So really promising a rate for their dividend today. And uh, I'll maintain one bank in my portfolio again. So for now, well, thank you BDO for the profit you've given me. But at this point, 106.92 is the nearest support I see. Um, overall, uh, this stock is too very attractive and exactly the same reason why I entered before because look at this, the potential is still there. We have significantly dropped in the recoveries just starting to manifest in the past few months, right? We're just moving within this range uh, since the last quarter of the year of uh, 2020. And then hopefully we break that uh, upper Bollinger Band. And once we do that, we will experience a significant climb. Next is after MB video, ASEN. ASEN is a green today. So let us see. This could be, um, this is still a support area around the 7 peso, 705 level. That's our support. And um, looks like we are sustaining, we are holding in that uh, key area. So that's a good sign with foreign buying. Um, I know I, I said I want to get in this stock again. So I'll closely monitor this later today and see if there will be a good opportunity and if 7 peso level will, will hold, then chances are that will then be my key entry. But we'll observe, okay? I just want to haggle for a few uh, pesos here, considering that we're still on the expensive side. Before I took profit the other day, I, my average was around, if I'm not mistaken, 6.5 or 6.3. So I just want to haggle. Hopefully it could drop up to this level before I can enter again. But we will see. That's the reason I have to observe first. ICT. ICT, uh, still for me, this is a profit-taking level. We crossed the MA20 line. We're lower than the MA20. Uh, so there could be some more selling pressure that will happen. So... I'd say if you're not a long-term investor for ICT, uh, just wait wait some more. I know you can get this at the lower price. GFC, no change, but we started to climb up. Uh, this is looking good for me. Uh, although this is a resistance area, but the moment we start much higher than the 186 by tomorrow, then um, chances are we could continue. There will be a continuation to the upside and the nearest resistance I see is the 210. That's the key area. And that will give us how much? That is a gain of 14%. But that should, that I'm sure it will not happen in, in a day. It might take her, take a few weeks before that key, key level will be reached again. Okay. Uh, Mary Mart, we dropped... Well, we're now back uh, the support area. So I'm not really sure if this is going to hold. Good if it is. Uh, because right now that's our support level. And we are agreeing with foreign buying. So, And uh, I also like the fundamentals of Merrimart. This is a strong company. So I think uh, that's a good sign. It looks like we are holding at this key area, 638. So try to get, get in as near as you can in that level. Maybe do a test buy just in case it drops. At least you still have some buying power to buy some more when it reaches 577. Okay. I think that is it uh, for this episode. Thank you guys for listening to me and good luck in your trades. Feel free to drop a comment. Let me know if these insights have helped you uh, uh, somehow in your journey in uh, the Philippine market. Thank you and bye-bye uh, for now.